second most popular Minecraft clone on the Xbox Indie Game Store. <laughs> look, look at this, man. It sucks. It's terrible. All right. Bye. I know it probably seems pretty outdated and obsolete now considering how accessible Minecraft is, but Total Miner really was a special experience, and it definitely sucks to see it completely abandoned like this. Total Miner not only gave me a nostalgic experience that I am very grateful for, it let me build what very well might be the last house ever built in the Xbox version of Total Miner, which I have to appreciate. Also, I swear I'm not trying to freak anyone out, but as I was getting b-roll for this part of the video, I stumbled across a deep cave that was filled with torches and looked a lot like someone had explored before. Which is pretty weird because I was literally the only player online. It was probably nothing though. Probably. I really love the Xbox Indie Game Store, and it sucks that playing any of these games requires so many annoying hoops to jump through that most people won't even bother. It's really sad to see hundreds and hundreds of games die off through no fault of their own. Maybe Microsoft will make some effort to archive them when the 360 servers go down, but I don't really see that happening, to be honest. The idea of a metaverse seems like a ridiculous concept, but also a relatively new one. I know seeing weird-ass Mark Zuckerberg step out from backstage to show off his stupid avatar seems like the kind of insanity that could only ever happen in the modern era, but the truth is people have been trying to make this sort of digital metaverse thing pretty much ever since the internet came out. No game is a better example of that than Cybertown. Released all the way back in 1995, Cybertown was a 3D browser-based chat room that lets you walk around, talk to old people, play games in a social setting, and basically live in a virtual town. Cybertown eventually shut down, and no one has heard from the creators since, but a very dedicated group of people have been working really hard to bring it back online, so I figured I'd give that a try so I could immerse myself in the ultimate 90s vision of the future. The website was laid out exactly how it would have been in the early 2000s, and a banner sat on top of the webpage, letting me know that this was chosen by Yahoo as the coolest chat site of 2001. What an honor. I signed up for an account, adopting the very futuristic alias Willy Finger, and for the first time, stepped into Cybertown. The first thing I noticed about Cybertown was just how terrible the controls are. The keyboard didn't do anything useful, and basically all of my navigation had to be done with the mouse. I guess I should have expected that, considering this is a 90s browser game, but man, it made moving around really, really annoying. I very poorly attempted to navigate the Cybertown Plaza, tossed a hello in chat just in case any humans came online, and stared very skeptically at this sign that claimed Cybertown was home to half a million citizens. For some reason, I could not help but doubt that. Continuing my stroll through this deserted plaza, it became very clear to me that Cybertown's political ethos of choice was good old American-style capitalism, as evidenced by these very large signs advertising soda and hamburgers. As I walked away, thinking about how mysteriously hungry I had just become, Suddenly, a little blue man appeared before me and seemed very eager to engage me in conversation. I introduced myself as Willy Finger, laughed a little bit when he responded with, Hey Willy, and he began talking about how bright the future was for Cybertown and how excited he was for new citizens to join. I wanted to ask him why he was still playing this game or how long he'd been a resident of Cybertown, but it seemed like he was pretty eager for me to explore the world on my own, so I took his advice and began traveling to locations outside of the plaza. The first place I checked out was the City Hall. I walked down this big long hallway and came out to a grand hall. It was pretty well made, featured a bunch of Art Deco style posters, and was really brought together by the giant rotating orb in the middle of the room. I explored some more, but there really wasn't much to see because I think the main attraction of the level was supposed to be the aforementioned giant orb. I'm not super familiar with 90s computer graphics technology, but I imagine it was a pretty big deal at the time to be able to render a giant orb in a web browser, which would explain why the rest of the level wasn't very fleshed out. I remembered at this point that each level in Cybertown had its own chat room, and all the messages sent, no matter how old, would be saved in it for anyone to see until basically the end of time. Like any futuristic cyber world though, it was mostly just full of the ramblings of a lonely 30 year old AI chatbot. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. How do you mend a jack o lantern With a pumpkin patch. The future is beautiful. As I was leaving, I noticed a locked door that, for some reason, I was not allowed to go behind. Luckily, using my advanced computer knowledge, I was able to phase through it, which brought me to this weird little lobby area. 
In it, I found this framed picture of a very nice looking fella named Flyby who was apparently the mayor of Cybertown. Right next to that, a statue with a plaque on the bottom that displayed the Cybertown Pledge. A barely legible pledge thanks to the low quality texture that read as follows. As a citizen of Cybertown, I pledge to uphold each of the principles of cyber etiquette and to encourage my fellow citizens to do the same. I will strive to maintain a family-oriented community for all, fellow citizens and newcomers alike. I wasn't really sure what to make of this pledge that I just swore allegiance to, and I'm not sure who this flyby person is, but from what I can tell, he runs a nice and peaceful little town, and if you ask me, looks like a pretty trustworthy guy. I remember that the little blue man from earlier told me I had access to a home here in Cybertown, so I clicked my heels together three times and was transported to my house. The first thing I noticed about my home was just how not cyber it was in comparison to literally the rest of the world. It was weirdly an old-fashioned home with these big brick walls, an open living area, and a Pierre Renoir painting titled The Excursionist, dated 1888. Admittedly, I did not know that and had to use Google Lens to find out what that was, but I would like you to imagine a world where I did know that. The main living area of the home wasn't really anything special, but I was graciously given a window that stares directly at a brick wall, which would maybe explain why rent is zero dollars. Tucked away in the corner of the living room was a really creepy, dimly lit space that had a pool table, or a, or a billiards table. I don't really know what the difference is between the two, and I have no intention of learning it. Whatever game it was though, apparently, in the distant future of Cybertown, it was played with only four white balls. The future truly is beautiful. The last room in my house was locked behind the door and featured a dining table, a fireplace, and a big set of skylights that offered a breathtaking view of, a, of just a blue gradient. That seemed a little counterintuitive to me, considering I didn't even have a proper roof and the blue gradient was visible from literally anywhere in the house, but I'm not going to complain about a place that I live in rent-free. I exited my house and entered the cyberhood, which I assumed was a play on the word neighborhood, like it's a cyber neighborhood. After taking one look around though, I realized that cyberhood means exactly what it sounds like. It was a cyber version of a good old fashioned hood. This was probably the first time during my entire visit to Cybertown that I was actually kind of glad no one else was online. I stumbled across a bar called Bar None, which had exactly one bar and a platform with a long pole on it. I assumed that this was put here so that the more open-minded residents of Cybertown could pay their way through Cyber College. I wandered more through this decrepit cyberhood and came across a trash can bonfire that looped maybe the worst sounding MP3 I've ever heard in my entire life. I get very scared of being in the hood for too long, so I did what any God-fearing cyber citizen would do and teleported somewhere a lot nicer. Prison. This is so weird to me, but Cybertown has a prison built into it that served to literally lock up anyone who was violating the laws of the land. There's a huge force field to keep people from escaping and this very imposing NPC who stands guard 24-7. Not that that does much good. The jail was completely empty, and there were force fields on all sides to prevent people from even getting in. I'm not exactly sure what laws you'd have to break to actually end up here, but if these signs on the wall are any indication, it looks like instead of implementing some kind of chat filter so people wouldn't swear, Cybertown instead opts to just throw anyone who says naughty words into jail. It was kind of insane to imagine a time where this game was so popular that it required moderation to keep things in order, and I think the presence of an actual physical jail is a testament to just how seriously people took the social aspect of this game. For a lot of people back in the day, Cybertown wasn't just a web page that happened to have a 3D chat room on it, it was an honest to god virtual world. While now the game is an empty shell of what it once was, and pretty much every location you visit will be eerily silent due to the lack of people, there was a time long ago where people kind of lived here. Cybertown is a product of a much simpler time. A time where the internet was much more than five or six corporate websites and it genuinely felt like logging onto cyberspace was some futuristic, otherworldly experience. My time around the city was definitely a little unsettling at times due to the lack of players, but the few people I ran into along the way were all very, very friendly and just wanted more people to be able to experience the magic that they felt when they booted up Cybertown for the first time 28 years ago. I ended my journey through Cybertown on this small little island complete with a pirate ship and palm trees. 
I took some time to reflect and thought about just how different the internet is now in comparison to how it was when Cybertown came out. Cybertown might be dead, but it's very clear to me that the memories people made here will always continue to live on. My memories include walking through a terrifying ghetto and talking to some strange little blue man, but those are memories all the same. I never had a PS3. I was a cool Xbox kid. I played Call of Duty map packs early and drank Halo 3 Mountain Dew by the gallon. And while I never really regretted my choice of console during the seventh generation of gaming, there was always one thing that the PS3 had that made me just a little bit jealous. PlayStation Home. It's a place you can meet friends and make new ones. You alright guys? I live in Smavic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down Smavic Hospitality G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking leg. PlayStation Home was probably Sony's weirdest idea ever. It was a big virtual world like Second Life where players could create an avatar, walk around, chat with people using this nasty keyboard, and most importantly, get advertised to. It was just a really weird experiment, and something I don't think any of the major console manufacturers would even consider doing nowadays. Unfortunately, in 2015, after the PS3 was all but dead, Sony decided to pull the plug on PlayStation Home, deleting not only the entire game, but erasing nearly seven years of content that had been made for it up to that point. If you watched this far into the video though, you should probably be able to guess what happened next. In 2020, a very talented group of people started a project to get PlayStation Home back online, exactly how it was before it shut down. I also went out and bought a PS3 for this part, which it turned out I don't even need because PlayStation Home runs just fine on an emulator. So uh, if anyone wants this old PS3, I've left it in the bush somewhere in Peoria, Illinois. I loaded into PlayStation Home as my new OC, Pumper Jones, noticed that there was a chat feature, and took a brief moment to type out the first and last words I would ever speak in this world. I took a second to look around and appreciate the beautiful view from my apartment, and also stare at my own face in all of its seventh generation console glory. I got bored of that pretty quickly though, and was starting to feel insecure about my appearance, so I teleported over to the hub, where I'd hopefully be able to try on some new clothes. After touching down in the hub, I was given the opportunity to customize my avatar in any way I saw fit. Which included just straight up turning him into Frank Woods from Call of Duty Black Ops. I won't lie, it, it took a massive amount of strength to not just play as Woods, but thanks to my inhuman resolve, I was able to press on. My goal here was to make my guy look as silly as I possibly could, and I figured the best way to do that would be to give him a mullet. That ended up just making him look like comedian Theo Vaughn though, so I gave him a unibrow and mutton chops so I could maybe offset those similarities. I thought about making him big and fat, but that's a little too on the nose for my sense of humor, okay? So I opted instead to make him very skinny and very short. I completed his look by giving him a Mountain Dew hoodie, surfing shorts, name brand Adidas shoes, and a 9mm handgun. That's about the time I realized that I had totally failed my mission of making the silliest guy possible, and instead had accidentally handcrafted the coolest guy to ever live. I wasn't really sure where to go or what to do after finishing that up, and PS Home doesn't really try to guide you towards any specific locations. So I just walked around a little bit until I came across this abandoned mall. I entered the mall and immediately found it pretty interesting just how many real life brands there were in here. There was a Diesel clothing store, an EA Sports store, and even a LucasArts store, which illustrates just how stuck in time this game is, because that company doesn't even exist anymore. Unfortunately, none of the stores actually worked, which I assume is a result of those servers being completely taken offline. Still though, I was able to enjoy this place for what it was, and spent an embarrassing amount of time just chilling and listening to that sweet, sweet abandoned mall ambience. Back at the hub world, I treated myself to a sad sitting down session and took a look at the various advertisements plastered all over the level. It was really weird seeing advertisements for things that don't even exist anymore and billboards trying to sell me on the new Call of Duty Black Ops 2 map pack that came out uh, 12 years ago. I pulled out my trusty little teleporter app thing and was honestly kind of overwhelmed by the amount of places I was able to go. 
I didn't really know what to pick, but after thinking about it for a little bit, I settled on the Adventure District. Admittedly, uh, I'm being honest here, I only chose this because it reminded me of Uncharted 2. I figured there was no greater adventure for the Adventure District than to sit by myself at a bar alone, staring at some weird machinery. That very quickly made me pretty sad though, and I don't like being sad, so I got up from my seat and beelined directly towards this giant cannon, which I expected to do nothing, but ended up activating this weird minigame where you shoot cannonballs at targets. This was actually awesome as shit, and way more than what I expected when I heard that PlayStation Home has games built into it. After I got done LARPing as a pirate, I ran over to this music stand where they were playing a 24-7 mix of one single song from the Uncharted soundtrack. Naturally, I did what anyone should do in that situation and sat my white ass down and listened. After I paid my respects to Uncharted, I opened up my teleporter thingy again and took a look at the levels I could go to. It was at this point I realized just how many major brand tie-in levels there were, and each one seemed more interesting than the last. They had worlds that only existed to promote Sony products, worlds that were promoting skincare and acne medication, and even uh, David Guetta world, which is so cool. But the one that really caught my attention was Toyota Prius world. Not because it was interesting or I thought it was cool, but because it was maybe the most shameless product placement in this entire game. The Toyota world had a mini game where you drove a Toyota Prius that controls like absolute butt and try to pick up these solar panels as fast as possible. I'm really not sure how to properly convey how terrible the controls were for this thing, but man, I'm, I'm telling you, they were really, really bad. This is the stupidest corporate tie-in game I have ever played, and I loved each and every second of it. After completely dominating in my Toyota Prius, I was in the mood for some more mini games, so I went to go check out this Ninja World. While it looked really interesting and was supposed to be some kind of third-person shooter, trying to play it hard crashed my game, so I can't really tell you if it was fun or not, and I guess I will never be Ninja. The game crashing made me feel like it was a good time to head over to my apartment and give it a little redesign. The furniture tool was actually really intuitive, and each piece of furniture you put down was affected by physics, which is awesome. I won't show you the long and tedious process of me designing my room, but I will take you on a short tour of the final result. This first area is my ultimate gamer setup, complete with a chair, a laptop, a lamp, and of course, a giant picture of the Joker from Joker. Next up, we have my shrine of five different cardboard cutouts of Hatsune Miku from the anime Hatsune Miku. Right next to that is my 2011 Scion TC, which if you know any Hatsune Miku lore, you know is her favorite car, probably. And if you look next to that, you'll find my second picture of the Joker from Joker. Over here you'll find my kitchen, complete with a gorgeous view of some boats and some rocks, and also a big ass plate of pancakes that are sitting concerningly close to the edge of the counter. Finally we come to the end of the room, which I really wanted to stand out, so I furnished it with a single picture, it's, an, it's another picture of the Joker. Yeah, it's just the Joker again. Thank you for watching the first ever episode of Rat Lobber MTV Cribs. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my home. As I stared at these annoying little anime things that I myself put in my own room, I get a sudden desire to visit Japan. Luckily, this version of PlayStation Home unlocks all of the previously region-locked worlds that we wouldn't otherwise be able to play, and that includes Japan-exclusive virtual worlds. I touched down in the first Japanese level, called the Doko Demo Isyo Lounge, and found myself in this strange little charming Japanese town. The first thing I noticed was just how hilariously out of place I was, and the second thing I noticed was this little poster that I can't read, complete with these two little strange characters on it. If you speak Japanese, this sign probably means something to you, uh, but to me, it just looks like a little dog person who is experiencing some kind of pain. I walked a bit more to this cozy little town and came across another freaky character that offered to take a commemorative photo with me. I figured why not and took a photo with him while brandishing my firearm so that he could get an authentically American experience. You can probably tell just by looking at the footage, but this place was really peaceful in comparison to just about every other place I've visited so far. I guess it was just another brand tie-in thing, but considering I don't really know what this brand is, it didn't really feel like a soulless cash grab to me. I took a stroll in the park and enjoyed the freshest of Japanese air, and then happened upon this little television set that told me I could play 
Toro Let's Party. When I clicked play though, it asked me to insert my Toro Let's Party disc. Unfortunately for me, I just so happened to leave my Toro Let's Party disc in my other pants, so I was not able to play today. The town didn't really have much else to do, and it seemed like a lot of the features that really would have made it interesting are now broken, but it was a really peaceful, well-designed little map, and I'm glad I played on it. It was pretty fun to just explore this old lost map that zero Americans even got to play on back when PlayStation Home servers were still up. I'm sure there are Japanese people out there who do remember this map, but according to YouTube, only 19,000 Japanese people have ever watched my videos, so if you are one of those 19,000 Japanese people, hello. You are Japanese. The main Japanese hub world wasn't super interesting, but it was a really nice looking map that seemed to be permanently stuck in Christmas 2015 mode. Also, when I joined, an alert sound played and this Japanese error was permanently stuck to the top of my screen. Upon translating it, it apparently said, some functions are limited due to a server error. O. Oh. The O oh at the end of that sentence made me so mad that I had to leave Japan after seeing that and hopped on over into David Ghetto World, which it is probably the most absurd idea for a world ever. I swear I'm not making this up, but this is literally the only time I ever saw another person in my entire playthrough. I guess she's just a really big fan of David Guetta. This level was laid out like a club, and just like in a real club, she did not seem very interested in talking to me and was just staring at her phone. So naturally, I took out my camera, got in her face, and took about 100 pictures of her. I walked over to the stage where I noticed quite a concerning lack of David Guetta and instead saw this lovely lady dancing around the pole. Honestly, I'm not even really sure who David Guetta is, but I did not know he got down like that. Also, if you're counting, there have now been two references to pole dancing in this one video. I am not sure how that happened, but I will work tirelessly to make sure it does not happen again. The rest of David Guetta World was just a big advertisement for Music Unlimited, which was Sony's now defunct version of Spotify exclusively for PlayStation consoles. There was also this DJ table that let me make a really, really bad mix, and you should honestly consider yourself lucky that I can't play it for you on YouTube, because it was very, very terrible. After experiencing more than enough David Guetta for one lifetime, though, I moseyed on over to the Star Wars Cantina. I really haven't seen oh, Star Wars, minor. but I think this is a one-to-one -one replica of that little bar where the little aliens play this music. I walked in and took a few pictures of the bartender's face with a flash on, and then walked over to this private booth that was advertising the Star Wars Blu-ray box set. If you're a big Star Wars fan, this is definitely something to look forward to, and it will be coming out in September 2011, so you should probably get ready for that. I ended my short time in the Star Wars world by enjoying a nice soothing round of royalty-free music performed by little nasty aliens. I finally ended my long journey in the world of PlayStation Home by visiting the original hub world. If I'm not mistaken, this is exactly where you would be if you were to log onto this game in 2008. This level, despite being old, was just as well designed as basically all the other ones, and it was a cozy place to kill time. Also, in true PlayStation Home spirit, it had an area dedicated exclusively to playing a Sony commercial. This was honestly one of the most interesting commercials that I saw in my time here though, because I couldn't find a single mention of it anywhere online. I think it was advertising a Sony camera or something, and seemed to feature this woman named Lauren, who made a web series called Linked. I tried fairly hard to find anything out about this commercial, but I just couldn't. It's pretty interesting that a commercial that seems to have a somewhat high budget is basically lost online, and the only place you can see it in the current year is to get on PlayStation Home, of all places. The rest of the old hub world was filled with locations I couldn't go to and advertisements for different PS Home features, but there was this little minigame in the center of the town that let you control an alien spacecraft and fly it around and crash it into yourself, which was a nice touch. I walked through the one door that was still functional and was taken back to the mall that I visited at the very start of my play session, so I figured this was a pretty good time to wrap it up and that I had seen a pretty good amount of what PlayStation Home had to offer. It was time to bid one final goodbye to PlayStation Home by taking a ride on the lamest Ferris wheel in human history. Playing through these dead games was truly a pretty weird experience, and I'm glad there are more than a few people out there fighting to keep stuff like this alive. No matter what your opinion is about any of the games we played today, I think it's pretty fair to say that none of them died because they were bad. They mostly all died because it requires a stupid amount of work to actually play them, which might as well be a death sentence for any game that isn't super popular. If anything though, 
Playing through these games taught me that online spaces are very transient. They can be here one day and gone the next, so it's pretty important that you enjoy what yeah. you have while you have it. Even if what you have is a freakishly small man in a Mountain Dew hoodie Do carrying a 9mm handgun. I had a lot of fun making this video, so I do hope you enjoyed it, and I also hope you consider supporting the actual people who are putting in the hard work to get stuff like Gmod 9, Cybertown, and PlayStation Home back online. Also, if you couldn't tell already, this video was inspired by Redline and the Dead Game series that he does on his channel. So, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, go look at his videos on your eyeballs. If you know of any more Dead Games that might be worth checking out, please write them down on a piece of paper and drop it off at this McDonald's in Peoria, Illinois. And I'll swing by to collect it within the next week. Alright, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I've been Ratlobber. Come forth. Peace. And die. Wow. can do this you, you, you can do this you can do this i did it gran brujo huh I will join your quest. You can do this. Rise me up. I all I mean. No more fear. That is going
I've always struggled making really long videos like this because my audience has like the worst attention span ever. And that's not a stab at anyone. Cause like when I make my videos, like I know that, you know, I'm gonna attract a bunch of kids that like can't get off their phone every five seconds, you know? And they have to like watch something new. So this is gonna be different and a little bit serious as well. But I wanna try something new. Cause if I have, if I have the audience I have today, well, I might as well provide some value to YouTube. And I've been wanting to make like a bunch of commentary videos and stuff like that. But at the same time, I also don't really think that provides a lot of value to YouTube. Look, I just, I just found a tent. Um, this is not mine, so that's weird. I think it's like one of those hunting tents. So I'm going for a walk right now. And um, I woke up today and I was like, damn, let's talk about something deep, you know? And I always see videos about people like, just walking and talking, you know? And that sounds fire. Because I like to go on walks and I like to talk. So depression. Um, I think I saw this study that says more than one in six people have it. Which, bro, that's got to be like an all-time high. Um, and I was looking at the stats and stuff. And I really think that it's even more prevalent in like young, younger people. Because that said adults, right? It said more than one in six adults have depression. And I really think that, like, teenagers also have it real bad. And there's also more factors, like, not to take away anything from anyone who actually has it. But I think that a lot of kids will just say they have it for attention. And obviously that's not good. But that's also a factor you have to weigh in, right? So, like, why does everyone have it these days? Well, I think a lot of it goes into social media and stuff. Like, literally the website you're watching this video on is not helping you at all. And that's something that I've been working on. Just getting, like, off of YouTube is so helpful. Just, like, getting off of, like, all these social medias. And everyone always says, like, oh, yeah, I'm off social media now. Let's go. But you're still spending like eight hours a day on YouTube or like you're spending like nine hours a day watching movies and stuff, which isn't. Yeah, that's not entirely social media, but it's just like a bunch of filler, right? Because when you get addicted to something, you'll find something new to, I guess, satisfy your addiction. So let's say you're addicted to Instagram. You can't get off it. Which also, I don't really know why so many people are addicted to Instagram. Like, I, I don't know. But either way, addicted to Instagram. 12 hours a day, you check your screen time. Like, damn, that's more than half the day. I also spend, like, a bunch of time sleeping. So that's, like, 20 hours. And I only have four hours to do stuff. So you'll get off Instagram. You'll delete that shit. And let's say that you don't relapse. You don't go back. Well, then you'll just find something new to satisfy your addictions. So you'll pick up YouTube, you'll pick up um, Netflix or something like that. And then it's just like, well, now you're back to, um, now you're back to normal pretty much. And like nowadays you have to like be on social media in between every single activity you're doing. Like this is also like something that I've been doing a lot lately, just because like it's winter, seasonal depressions coming up and shit you know so like it's not ideal right um so like every between every activity i'm doing let's say i'm about to hit the gym or something in between all my sets i'm just like scrolling through reels scrolling through youtube and stuff like that you know it's just like every single thing you're doing you're preoccupying it with with social media and stuff like that and you don't even notice how how long you're spending until it's like too late and then you're addicted and that's how they hook you in their algorithm is crazy by the way like literally i will watch one joe rogan podcast and then five minutes later i get recommended 25 joe rogan podcasts and then all of a sudden i'm on this like joe rogan spree of watching all of his podcasts which are all like two hours long and like that's like informational so like it's fine well, let's say you got addicted to something like real bad. Like, let's say, let's say you're watching like fucking Baby Shark or some like something terrible, like Skibbity Toilet, right? 
Skibbity toilet. I mean, obviously, I don't think you guys are dumb enough to get addicted to Skibbity toilet, but let's say you guys are. Well, shit. Then you're just then you're just fucked because now you're just taking in a bunch of like random videos that don't provide any value to your life that literally like melt your brain. So that's something that definitely is a big factor because like 25, 30 years ago, obviously social media was not really a thing, which also means less depression and shit, more self-esteem. Everyone's got more self-esteem back then because like you're looking at social media. This is not, not something I even, um, not something I even talked about yet, but like everyone's perfect, you know, on social media and like the top 1% of people they, they're all famous, right? So all those, like, sexy men and sexy women, they're, like, oh. they're perfect, and you want to be like them. A gun. And that's not yeah. very, um, that's not very, uh, what's the word? God, I can't, I can't think of the word. But it's just, it, oh, it's not really realistic. How did I, I forgot to. What the hell? Um, let me figure out where I want to walk. Also, guys. I've been trying, I, I'm off for bulk now, so I'm done bulking. And I need you guys to comment, if you guys made it this far at least. And if you didn't, well, you guys just proved my point, right? About the social media, self-esteem, horrible, um, horrible. Uh, anyways, so yeah, I'm done bulking. But uh, I, I like to order food a lot, just because like, I don't really ever have any like food in the house. So ordering food is like my, my thing, right? So I need to I need to think of the perfect thing like the per perfect meal prep food yeah, to how order this one? for what the? just like the week. What the? I was thinking like just Chipotle. That's, That's probably like the best best uh, way to get on like a good cut with a bunch of protein and shit. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh. It's not really important to the to the topic that I'm talking about. But um yeah, guys. So social media is definitely one thing. Uh, what's another thing? Obviously, that's like the biggest thing. Also, like relationships and stuff. I feel like now, 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 kids what? will just like get into a relationship just just to get in one. And there's like so much pressure now from like other people. Like you gotta get laid. You gotta get laid. And like yeah, once you get laid, that's great. Um, but if you let's say you don't, <laughs> let's say you're like. You can't, you can't get hoes, right? Um, and then you're, yeah, like, always going to be that one kid in the friend group that just, like, can't pool. And then everyone's going to make fun of you and stuff. And honestly, I'm a little bit hypocritical because, like, I got, a kid, I got a kid in my friend group that can't get laid, <laughs> which is no hate to him or anything. But it's true. And, like, I'll, I'll kind of, like, I'll, I'll poke some fun huh? jokes at him and stuff like that. But, like, at the, at the same time, like... It must also not be a good feeling, right? Swear there was a it's probably not a good feeling. Not getting any hoes, right? <clears throat> but, like, because of that, now there's so much pressure to just, like, jump straight into a relationship or something like that. And sometimes you'll just settle for, like, something that you don't want. Like, settle for way less than perfect. And I've done this many times. I've done this, you know, a couple months ago, I did this. About a year ago, I did the same thing. And, what um, I obviously, I finally thing? learned my lesson, right? not to settle for anything less than perfect, which has been working out very well. But for a lot of people, they, they, they'll just go for like someone that they just don't even really like that much just because they, you, want that, uh, you want that action, right? And that'll also lead to a lot of, uh, a lot of negativity, a lot of bad, bad emotions and shit and to toxicity, which is just all like not good, right? So those are two really big things. Uh, that I think affect the younger, the younger group of people. Obviously, if you're like in your late twenties or thirties, you're not going to be like really in this demographic of people. And maybe even like, you won't even be in like the social media addiction era, which is great. So if you're in your late twenties, early thirties, and you're watching this video, I mean, obviously this video isn't really for you, but also like, bro, I envy you because and a lot of people do, because imagine not being addicted to social media. What a great feeling that must be. Imagine just being able to walk around in nature and shit without your phone 
and not feel like you're missing something. Nowadays, like, if you're missing your phone, you'll notice it. And it's like, it feels like a part of you is missing. Like, it's like a missing puzzle piece. And that's something that I also struggle with. It's kind of crazy, bro. It's kind of crazy how they get you addicted. I'm looking at these trees right out here. Because Christmas coming up. And there's a bunch of, like, pine trees and shit. Um, I'll show you guys. Look at how beautiful it is. I'm, like, way far away from my house. So I probably don't know how I'm going <laughs> to... I don't know how I'm going to get back. But I like just going on walks and shit. Especially in the morning, because that, that helps wake you up, get your blood flowing. Um, and that's also another thing. Bro, people are so lazy these days. And this is also, like, something that also um, con contributes contributes to, like, the social media addiction. Because you'll kind of just, like, lay in bed all day, not really do anything. And another thing about that is that'll also, like, make you less attractive. Because if you're sitting in bed all day, watching social media... Well, you won't pay attention to your skincare. You won't brush your teeth. You won't do your hair. Obviously, I don't have any hair right now because I, uh, I shaved my head for a YouTube video. Um, but yeah, you don't do your hair. Don't do uh, anything, bro. If you're a girl, don't do your makeup or whatever. Obviously, that's not really an important thing. You don't need makeup, right? All right, guys. So uh, as I was recording, my iPhone storage ran out. Um, so I had to delete a bunch of stuff. Thankfully, I just deleted a bunch of, like, random videos I have. I have a bunch of, like, memes and stuff from a couple of years back. So, we're good on that. I didn't have to delete all my nature photos and shit like that. That would not be good. And another topic I forgot to even get into is, like, porn, bro. Like, I can't believe I forgot to even talk about it. Don't even get me started with that. Every single kid I know is addicted to that. And it's sad. Um, and I really think it's going to be a lot worse for, for the new generation. Um, like the little kids that are like five years old now, it's going to be difficult because with like the rise of Twitch and the rise of like OnlyFans and stuff like that, like it's difficult, definitely. Cause like when I was growing up and shit, like when I was 12 years old, I did, there was no OnlyFans and stuff and I didn't really have to worry about that. And I also wasn't really into like, I wasn't really into like YouTube and like all that stuff at the time because I don't know I was just doing my own thing I didn't I don't think I even had like a, a working phone that could connect to the internet but now that everyone's an iPad kid and like everyone's constantly on um on the internet all day could you imagine how bad it's going to be for them you know it's not going to be good when I was growing up the big thing was Belle Delphine that was the one that was the one thing you had to stay away from and then you'd be good no addiction. So that's also something. I would say four four big things that uh, that I talk about in this video. Four big reasons that you maybe have depression today. Um, and if you're like a younger person, this will definitely uh, one of these things will definitely apply to you. And if if they don't, well, that's good. And uh, you you just have to work on the other things. But things you want to cut out a lot of social media and i know that's difficult but it is true to all the people that say they got happier by cutting out social media it's true cut out social media you don't have to do it entirely you can still have the apps downloaded maybe but just like slowly slowly but surely get off of everything i see a lot of people just go completely cold turkey on that stuff and I feel like that's why people keep going back to it because that's not really a viable option. I think the best way to quit an addiction is to slowly get away from it or move to something that you enjoy more but could be more beneficial. So if you're trying to quit a social media addiction, just slowly get off. Let's, say you're, let's just say you're addicted to Instagram, for example. Just slowly... Get off of Reels, okay? Instagram Reels. You don't need those anymore, okay? And, you know, maybe, maybe every once in a while if you're just, like, really, really bored, okay, scroll through scroll through some Reels every, every once in a while just for maybe, like, 10 minutes, right? But don't go on hour, two-hour-long binges, right? You hear that dog over there? Don't go on, like, hour, two-hour-long two binges because that's not, that's not going to be good for you, right? And then slowly you'll just you'll find something new 
that can that will replace that addiction and that doesn't mean get addicted to something else okay i'm not telling you to do drugs or anything i'm just saying get get on something that 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 can make you happy bro people are yelling over there anyways something that's beneficial right and then another thing is um don't jump into a relationship i honestly wouldn't recommend anyone jumping into a relationship especially if you're um under under 18 obviously if you're above 18 you know and you kind of have your life figured out well then you can start looking searching i mean i i know i'm being hypocritical because like i'm i have people that i'm talking to but uh with that being said definitely don't jump into a relationship unless you really have your life figured out and maybe you've learned enough from previous ones that you kind of know you know what you want right and don't let fucking your friend group pressure you into into getting laid right because that's not a good idea i was someone who kind of fell victim to that a couple years ago back at summer camp but um what can you do right live and learn now uh, the other thing that i talked about yeah obviously corn corn addiction that ain't good and like people that are that are just lazy so get out of bed do something beneficial start a skincare routine just something in the morning right wake yourself up maybe take a shower in the morning and just start like a nice little routine maybe get in the gym if you're not already obviously gym is like the best best thing to help you become happy if you look good you'll feel good right and if you feel good then goodbye depression and a lot of people say that like that stuff lasts forever and it sticks with you forever depression uh and i'm personally i personally don't agree with that i think that if you if you have your life in check i really think that if you have a million dollars a year and that's your salary and you're living on a beach you got a nice yacht and a wife or something then you won't have depression you need to you need to live live the best life and obviously that's not not easy and i'm not i'm certainly not living my best life but i've done enough to improve i guess you could say well i guess that's about it so if you're uh i'll do one last rundown some a lot of things i would help quitting social media quitting your corn you know corn addiction if you have one i know a lot of people do getting in the gym also beneficial and i know a lot of people talk about that stuff but it is true you know you'll notice a big change and uh yeah that's about it and um just stop being lazy get out of bed start a little routine going and it should help um I know that a lot of people aren't going to watch this video or enjoy it uh, because, like I said, my audience has a very low attention span. And I should have posted this video on another uh, on another channel. But at the same time, if anyone's going through something hard, I want to at least help them. And I want to just, uh, if I can help one person, then that's enough for me. And yeah, if, if, I know a lot of people are going to say, you fell off, you fell off. Because this video probably has like a thousand views. But... That's a thousand real people out there that I could help. So thank you all for watching, and uh, I guess I'll be talking. Uh, I'll be talking to them tomorrow because I really, I really do enjoy making videos like this. And I really think they're a lot more beneficial than my six-second-long videos. And I, I also want to live stream. Of course, I'll still be live streaming, but maybe we'll just uh, slowly make a transition into videos like this that actually help people. I think that would be. Uh, very impactful because a lot of people need it so yeah thanks for watching the video i was just making a thumbnail real quick this is a good thumbnail i, I don't know <laughs> thanks for watching guys i'll see you all tomorrow It's a friend.
final teammate. He will write something. Where are the patron guys though? Especially Kiradrian. Unless he went back to town English, that's all. <clears throat> This boss is the easiest because it's not so annoying with all the abilities. And I still got a premium hole. My god. check all of them in chat. Oh, it doesn't have respiration. I just realized that. Moment, it will 
for a brief time period, it was、uh, named on him. Was, uh, was interesting. Was the signs that say the limit? Get your tear, tear trim for you. you. Can't just do this one. Oh, you can't do that. And this project kind of failed. So nice. Oh, there's a panda on here. There's a panda on here. No one bird. How much is needed to be done? See ya.